As a group of treasure hunters from the flatlands, we have to get creative finding treasure. Whether it's gold, old coins, or old relics, if it's considered treasure, we'll hunt for it. Although we live in an area almost void of gold, and we typically relic hunt or shoot for jewelry and coins, prospecting is still one of our favorite treasure hunting activities. It's the ultimate treasure. We do get out periodically in the surrounding states to search for gold, but since we're based in Kansas, rich gold-bearing earth is really not in abundance. In fact, the largest piece of gold I've seen personally pulled out of the ground is this one, called the Little Kansas Picker, found in northeastern Kansas. It was a relatively flat piece measuring about 5 millimeters long. It's the first picker-sized piece I've seen in Kansas. The fellow prospector that found this said it took him quite a while to find, and it's the largest he's seen around here as well. The largest piece I've personally found in this region is this flake, about 45 minutes north of the Kansas City area. On the trip in this video, we decided to focus our efforts in Arizona. Arizona has produced over 16 million troy ounces of gold and is ranked among the top states for gold production. After doing a little research, we decided to dial down to the Rich Hill area near Congress, Arizona, which is famous for gold prospecting and its mining history. Located within the Weaver Mining District, this area is well known for its potato patch, an area where gold was once so plentiful it said you could pick up gold nuggets the size of potatoes on the bare surface of the ground. We arrived on Thursday afternoon and got checked into a nice little motel called the Sierra Vista Inn, located in Congress. It's well maintained and highly recommended. We'd stay there the first night and get ready for the rest of our adventure, which would take place out in the rugged desert. Prospecting methods and techniques can vary greatly from one location to another. Although we have access to a ton of Arizona mining claims through the Gold Prospectors Association of America, and we'd certainly visit some, we thought it would be best to spend at least a day or two with the pros to learn how to prospect this area. Our guide was Bob from Frontier Prospecting in Congress, Arizona. Bob and the owner Mel have been prospecting in this area for several years. Bob volunteers his time to help people find gold, and together they have several private mining claims which they have the exclusive right to mine for gold. They do this as well as lease the claim out and give lessons on mining and metal detecting. After speaking to a few different outfitters, we chose Frontier for their personalities, professionalism, and the fact they have properties that have turned out some pretty darn good nuggets. We are on our way to our very, we met with Bob from Frontier Prospectors. He hooked us up this nifty map that shows us all the claims. It has all the GPA claims on it and everything. We are about right here. We're headed clear over here to Lucky Linda, which is a GPA claim that we've been wanting to go to for a while. A lot of good gold's been found out here. Tongue nugget. The tongue nugget. On our way, we stopped into the Lost Dutchman's Miners Association camp, which is the sister organization of the Gold Prospectors Association. We visited a moment with a caretaker, double-checked our route to Lucky Linda, and headed down the road to find some gold. Only a short distance further, it was quite clear this area was truly a gold-producing area of the country. There were some serious mining operations set up. There were bulldozers, enormous excavators, and even water retention pits being set up to run full-scale mining operations. There were also some prospecting camps scattered along the hillsides for the weekend warriors or hobby prospectors. It was really an eye-opening experience to see how integral mining has always been to this area. Pulling into Lucky Linda. Mining claim. Once we arrived and found a little area a ways into the claim to park, we geared up and started swinging the sticks, splitting up to cover a wider area. We were hunting with our Garrett A2 Pros that evening. This machine is typically used for relic hunting, coin shooting, or jewelry hunting, whereas the AT Gold is more of a gold prospecting machine. However, adjusted properly and with a little practice, the AT Pro can be an excellent prospecting weapon and is very suitable for the sport. After I took a few minutes to get my AT Pro dialed in by ground balancing it, changing the discrimination settings, frequency, sensitivity, etc., I quickly learned I had it tuned in properly. Although we didn't find any gold this evening, we do in the next few days. That evening we didn't have much time to grid the property and we relied a little on luck. However, we did find several lead bullets, which is valuable knowledge. Lead reads a lot like gold under a metal detector. If we could find this, we could find gold nuggets. 
We accomplished what we wanted that evening, which was to get out into the desert and prospect. It was more about getting our machines working well enough so they would find a gold nugget if we are fortunate enough to run it over one and get introduced to the terrain. If you want to see some of the yellow stuff, you're going to have to stay tuned to High Plains Prospector Channel for day two and three of the Rich Hill, Arizona prospecting trip from High Plains Prospectors. Don't forget, you can buy all your metal detecting and gold prospecting equipment online at www.highplainsprospectors.com where you can buy anything from snuffer bottles to gold trommels.